Uh, what's keeping me from seeing them? Out of nowhere, um, once um, my my ex, mm -hmm. they they saw that I was keeping the commandments as well, and um, I think that kind of kind of made them scary because they said that, uh, well, you're in a cult. You're in a cult. We don't believe that kind of way. Mm -hmm. You know, those kind of things like mm -hmm. that. And um, ever since then, her family, they, they shut off all kind of contact. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been able to see them since. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, I grew up in the Maryland, D.C. area. And, um, as a child, both my parents, they was Christian, and um, I used to go to church every Sunday as a child growing up. And um, that was pretty much that was pretty much our background. For did you did you keep the faith after you left? You went off to college and everything. Did you keep on with the faith and with your devout Christian? I mean, how was your? Yes, sir. I kept I kept in the faith, but I I just knew some things weren't weren't right, and some some things weren't working how I thought it should, how they say the word works. Mm -hmm. So um, after then, that's when I started doing more research. Can you give me an example of some things that you just thought that wasn't, was it just based on feelings? Or um, no, it was just, uh, oh, just leave it to God. Just leave it to God kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Like, a, like just pray one time, just pray one time and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, man, this, this ain't right. And I was reading things in um, scripture, like with that lady who kept approaching that, that judge or, mm -hmm. and she kept coming back and back and back mm -hmm. and forth. And I was like, hold up. Well, I don't just pray one time. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, my family was teaching me those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So, so that was a contradiction from what you read, from what you were hearing. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So what school did you, I mean, now you went off to college. What college did you go to? Can you tell us about your college experience and everything? Yes, sir. I went to the University of North Carolina, and okay. um, I spent spent most of my years there okay. and um, graduated there. Uh, communications and African American history. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Did yeah. you play sports? Yes, sir. I played football. Okay. And what, what was your position? In uh, I played DN and outside linebacker. Okay. Rushing okay. the passer. Okay. Yes, sir. So now, when you went, I'm assuming you went to a great school. I went to San Diego State, so I, I, I wasn't I didn't have the luxury of going to a school like yours. Yes, sir. But there's a lot of guys <laughs> that goes to the league. Did you end up going to the in the, in the playing pro football when you uh, were done with Yes, the sir. When I graduated, I was uh, recruited by a lot of NFL teams. Mm -hmm. But the year that I graduated was the lockout. Mm -hmm. So um, a Canadian team had offered me a lot of money to come up and play with them. Okay. So I took that opportunity and went and went up north. Okay, and how many years did you play with them? Uh, three years. Three years. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, even in your in your you're playing in the, in the pros, did you, did, were you how 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 important was your faith at that time? Did you have did you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Did you, I mean, did you have any faith with? Yes, sir. It was crucial um, because the, you know there's times as an athlete, you know, um, there's there's tough times sometimes, and you always got to have a foundation of Yahshua. You got to have some kind of foundation. So, I did what I thought was right then. As far as the faith, okay, yes, sir. Now, so when did you discover Pastor Dow? Like, I mean, how how long Man. did you discover him? What what drew you to him? Yes, sir. And and, and how did you get into the faith eventually? Uh, it was when uh, 2014 when I was in North Carolina, and um, I was I was doing a lot of research mm -hmm. trying to. Because I seen some things was like Jesus isn't real and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I was like, come on. So I started doing more research, and uh, I I saw that he was black. He was mm. a black man. So I was like, hold up. I, all, my whole life I've been seeing a white Jesus. So I was like, this book is telling me he's black, burnt feet, burnt like a brass in a furnace. Mm -hmm. So after that, um, I started doing more research and I saw one of the videos of Pastor Dow popped up. Um, why am I a Christian? Why I'm not a Christian? Mm. And from then on, I just started listening to everything that he said and I backtracked and looked at what he was saying according to the word and it was adding up and it was matching. So that wasn't, that just, just blew my mind. Mm. Yes, sir. Did you hear anything negative about the ministry? And if you did hear anything negative, how did that impact you uh, looking at Straightway or being involved? 
Yeah, so I saw a few cult videos, a few cult videos, and um, but after I did my due diligence, I saw that it was a lot of bullshit. Really, mm -hmm. it was bullshit because mm -hmm. everything he said was in the word, mm -hmm. and you can't you can't negate it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now, now that you've been in here now, from your experience being part of Straight Way, and you, you, this is your first feast or your yes, sir. your first time up here, right? yes sir. So yes, sir. how do you explain? I know you you to be leaving, but just how do you explain? Your experience so far, uh, being here live as opposed, you know, I know you've been watching it mm -hmm. as opposed to your experience when you was in the Christian faith. It's off the chain. Um, it's it's the the fellowship. Mm. The people are just so genuine and so real, and you can tell it's just not a fake little Christian mm. Sunday mm -hmm. one time. Everybody communicates and stays in contact mm. with each other. Mm. Um, it's kind of like that locker room brotherhood, man, mm -hmm. with the brothers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And and we build each other up, and, I, and I, it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. It's been amazing, brother. It's been now, amazing. You, you, you play ball. Now, I know, you know, being an athlete myself. Yes, sir. You, now, did you, before straightway, did you ever experience, what was the highest level of brotherhood that you ever experienced? Uh, was it, you know, being in the Christian church? Was it, you know, being at home or being on a football team? What was the highest level before straightway? I just want to know. It was a, a football Football, okay. yes, sir. It was a lot of a lot of camaraderie, a lot of brotherhood there, locker room stuff. Yeah, spend a lot of time with each other. All the yeah. time, yes, sir. Sweat, blood, and tears, yes, sir. So now that you experience straightway, would you say that is at the same level? Is it kind? I mean, how would you compare straightway now with your experience playing all those years of football? And the brotherhood? Ah, man, it's, it it tops it tops football because it's more it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. It's not just a, a brotherhood. It's even more top mm -hmm. on, on of that. So it's it's even better than that. Wow. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So um, now everyone that's come into this stuff, I mean, it seems like it's a common thing that they experience some type of form. Now, I don't know if it's changed. Maybe it's different with you. Did you have you experienced any type of persecution from natural family, friends, being a part of this ministry or, or, or practicing uh, the commandments, keeping the commandments? Yes, sir. Uh, a lot of my family members would think I'm, I'm crazy mm -hmm. or I don't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And um uh, it's been some times where I know my son had to play play a few games mm. on a uh, Shabbat, mm. and uh, you know my mom would, would ask me and she'd say, you know, uh, well, you know, we supported you. Mm. Why can't you, you know, come and support your 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 son? Mm. And I said, you know, I I believe in Yahshua mm -hmm. over my mother, father, son, anybody else. Mm. So I, I I respect the Shabbat more than. Mm you know, a, a, a Shabbat, a Saturday mm -hmm. game, mm -hmm. you know. So so being an athlete, you know, you played football, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, this is something that you you grew up doing. Now your son is following your footstep, and and now he's playing on Saturday or, or on, on the Shabbat, and you still don't go to the games. Uh, as of as of yet, yeah, I haven't I haven't been to any games like he hasn't been playing lately. So okay, oh, yes, he hasn't sir. Been no, sir. Oh, okay, good. Yes, sir. Have you explained that? You have, you have a conversation with him? Oh, uh, we go? we talk all the time. We read um, Luke four sixteen, and I ask him. I say, Ty, um, when when are we supposed to go? And uh, you know, have rest. Mm. He said, It says here, Jesus went and he spoke on the Shabbat. Mm. And, and that's what we do. And I teach him that, and I, I teach him a lot of other things as well in the, in the Word. Okay. Yes, sir. Is there any other anything you want to share? Just other type of uh, persecution that you may have experienced? Just keep this this be, be being in, um, practice this lifestyle of keeping the commandments. Ah, uh, man, that's that's a lot of friends. Um, you know who were Christians who I thought that were my friends, and um, after they saw that I, you know, I no longer um hang out with them on <laughs> on weekends and stuff like that, and I keep the Shabbat, mm -hmm. they they kind of distance themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They do not want to learn about where you're coming from so they can be a part of it. Or, not at all. They're Christians, right? I mean, so they're Bible-believing Christians, right? I mean, do they not want to, you know, learn how to love Jesus? Or No, sir. It's, it's been pretty tough. They they have a rejection spirit, and they, they reject anything that, I you know, I would tell them. Mm -hmm. And they say, man, you crazy. Mm -hmm. And they just distance themselves. So now you've met Pastor Dow in person, right? Yeah, you, sir. If you, if you had some one-on-one -on -one time. So what is it like <laughs> meeting a man? <laughs> In person now, and, you know, you saw him on screen. Most of them, you know, YouTube and mm -hmm. on, on on the screen and everything. But now meeting the man in person, is it? Is, I mean, tell me, tell, tell me what that experience is like. Is it everything you thought it would be? Is it less? Man. Or Two years ago, I met Pastor the first time at the debate mm -hmm. in um in Fairfax, Virginia. Okay. And um, when I met him there, I talked to him for a while, and he was just a 
a cool laid back dude, man. I thought it, I thought he was something else, but he was so super cool, man. Mm -hmm. And then just this second time for Tabernacles, man, he was we was cool. We was had brotherhood. We all just you know chilled and relaxed, man. And he's nothing like what you know people say he is, mm -hmm. like the cult, and he's this and that. Mm -hmm. Totally different, man. Now this is my last question here. I, last night, Pastor Dell, you know he you know how he does this every every <laughs> Shabbat where yes, he sits at the table and he starts talking to the next generation. Yes, sir. You know, sharing his dreams and just, you know, still preaching, you know, still. Yes, sir. To, that I noticed you was very, you know, honed in in what he was saying. What, yes, sir. Just tell me what that was like being at that, being at that table and just listen to Pastor Dow share his heart about Man. the future. It's uncut. Mm -hmm. It's not like how you see on the videos. He really spill out his heart, and he keeps it super 100. He mm -hmm. keeps it real with you. Mm -hmm. And as a man, I can respect that, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate him for that. Mm -hmm. And it's just something I can't explain. He's a, he's a super, super man of God, mm -hmm. super man of Yah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. So since you've been following this ministry, right, yes, how sir. would you say that this has impacted your life as a, as a just personally? How has this impacted you as a man? Um, being a part of this ministry, how's that impacted you personally? Uh, personally, uh, I feel more comfortable as a man knowing who I'm, at, who I am, mm -hmm. and where I come from, from um, all my studies and research, and from what past, pastor teaches us as well. And um, my life has just been much better, man. Just I have I had more peace mm -hmm. keeping the Shabbat and um, keeping the commandments mm -hmm. and doing the best I can as mm -hmm. as a man of Yah, and it's just it's it's helped me out a lot. Do you ever think about uh, doing community? You know, Pastor Al always talks about us, uh, you know, c coming into community. Have you ever thought about maybe considering that in the, down down the road for yourself? Yes, sir, absolutely. Um, as of now, up in uh, in Straightway, Maryland, mm -hmm. uh, we we now you know we talk about those things and taking steps, uh, going to the next level, and purchasing land and mm -hmm. being a, a close knit community and basically learning everything from Pastor on how to run a proper community. Yeah. What was it about my the stuff that you saw from my YouTube that you know some of the things that inspired you from that stuff? I remember you were just you know when we first was talking. Yes, sir. You can share that. Yes, sir. Absolutely, I could relate a whole lot to what you was going through. You know, um, with your children mm -hmm. and and with your your wife, because mm -hmm. I had a similar situation with my second child, mm -hmm. and um, I've been standing now for two years, mm -hmm. and I, I haven't I haven't seen seen my child, heard mm -hmm. from him, mm -hmm. or anything, and. Um, I'm just going to keep standing and uh, keep the commandments and keep serving y'all. Mm -hmm. So you haven't even seen him even being born or anything like that? Yes, sir. I, I saw him. I saw him after he was born. The first day I was there, and I, uh, after, I have, I've seen him after that. I have seen him after that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But not now. Not the past two years. Two years. Wow. And he's three years old now. I'm going on four. Mm. Yes, sir. And what 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 is uh, required for you to be able to see him? What's what's keeping you from seeing him? Uh, what's keeping me from seeing them out of nowhere? Um, once um, my my ex, mm -hmm. they they saw that I was keeping the commandments as well, and um, I think that kind of kind of made them scary because they said that, uh, "Well, you're in a cult. You're in a cult. We don't believe that kind of way." Mm -hmm. You know those kind of things like mm -hmm. that. And um, ever since then, her family they they shut off all kind of contact, mm -hmm. and I haven't been able to see them since. Mm -hmm. And I had spoken with this with um, Dr. Murray. From reading and from what he's saying, biblical marriage is just biblical marriage. Mm -hmm. Whether the man makes the decision to have one wife 
or two wives. It's holy marriage. Thank you.